Materials 5, stress and strain. This is where we get mathematical. Okay, now, how much a wire extends depends on its dimensions. If you have a, a, a thick wire, it won't stretch as much as a thin wire. If you have a short wire, it won't stretch as much as a long wire. So basically, how much it stretches its extension will depend on its cross-sectional area and it will depend on its length. In other words, its dimensions. If we want to compare materials, then we need to take this into account. Okay, you don't talk about the, the, the stiffness of copper. You talk about something called the Young's modulus of copper. You need a material property. Okay, with the same load, a longer wire will have a bigger extension. A thicker wire will have a smaller extension. So, how do we take the dimensions into account? Well, instead of just talking about force, what we do is we talk about the force per unit area. And the force per unit area uh, is called the stress. Uh, the Greek letter sigma, and sigma equals F over A. Stress equals force over A. And just like pressure, it can be measured in newtons per meter squared or pascal. Uh, we don't just talk about the extension, we talk about the extension uh, divided by the original length, and that's called the strain. So, just as a force causes an extension, a stress causes a strain. And just as F over X equals K, then stress over strain equals this material property, uh, the bulk modulus of elasticity, or we're just going to call it Young's Modulus, named after Thomas Young, one of the cleverest gits who ever lived. Thomas Young, uh, big E equals stress over strain, and that is a material property. Because we're taking the dimensions into account, it doesn't matter how long or fat the wire is, the Young's Modulus is a material property, a bit like density. Yeah, the density of a material is independent of its dimensions, and so is its Young's modulus. Okay, uh, note that strain is sometimes given as a percentage. Be careful. If it says a 2% strain, it means 0.02. Okay, let's have a look at some examples now. Um, see if you can do this by yourself, and then I'll show you the answer in a couple of seconds. There we go. So area equals pi r squared. Um, I shouldn't need to tell you, get rid of uh, millimeters as soon as possible. Pi times 0 0.35 times 10 to the minus three squared. Yeah, newtons per meter squared. We do not want newtons per millimeter squared. Okay, get rid of millimeters, centimeters, etc. as soon as possible. Then sigma equals F over A. Uh, notice that I've given the stress in mega pascal, which is very common. Uh, the strain doesn't have any units, it's just x over l, 2 times 10 to the minus 3. And then the Young's modulus is the stress over strain, uh, and I've given that in giga pascals, which is a very common what you see in a data book or whatever, giga pascals for Young's modulus. Here are some uh, quantities here for four different metals. Now, I've got the Young's modulus there. You can look at those and you see that steel is the, the stiffest material. Aluminium is the least stiff. Now, I've got two other quantities there. I've got the yield stress. That's the stress which causes plastic deformation. Okay, so it's, it's never going to return back to its original length. The stress that causes plastic deformation is the yield stress. And then the ultimate tensile strength is the stress that causes breaking. Okay, sigma UTS. Sigma UTS is the maximum force, the force needed to break it, divided by the area. Here's a question for you to have a go at. I'll show you the answer in a couple of seconds. And there you go, straightforward, just using the equations on the last slide. 
Um, to get the Young's modulus, if we have a, a force extension graph, then note that we use the values at the elastic limit while the graph is a straight line. So the Young's modulus is stress over strain. Uh, so it's force over area. Uh, and then you've got uh, X on the bottom and L on the top. So FL over AX.